Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial from Enlist Q, where I will show you how to install Q and KDB using Conda and also provide you with a brief introduction to what Conda really is and why it is nice to be able to use it to install KDB. First of all, Conda is an open source environment and package manager. It allows you to easily manage multiple environments and really keep them separate from one another. This is incredibly useful because as your code matures, you start relying on multiple libraries of different versions. Having separate environments allows you to run your code using libraries of different versions. For example, a lot of users are still using Python 2.7 when they really should be using Python 3 or plus something, 3.6 or higher. With Conda, they can have one environment where they run their old code using Python 2.7 as they migrate to the new version, which can be run on a new environment using Python 3.6. Additionally, Conda is a, a package manager, so it allows you to easily install, uninstall, and update packages. This is something that KDB never had, so I'm really excited that you know KDB now supports this, uh, supports Conda. Finally, Conda takes care of packages and their dependencies. For example, if you need to install a famous Python package such as Pandas, Conda will know to install all of its dependencies as well, such as the NumPy package. This really streamlines the process and makes it really easy for users to install packages. Now that's enough about Conda. Now let's really see how we can use Conda to install KDB. If you don't have Conda, you'll first have to install that. There are usually two distributions that you can get Online, one is um, <clears throat> called Conda, and the other one, Miniconda, sorry, and the other one called Anaconda. If you use Anaconda, it's basically the heavier version of Conda, and it comes with a lot of uh, important libraries, Python libraries, uh, pre-installed, so it'll take longer to install. Since we're not really worried about the Python libraries, we're just going to go with Miniconda. So what you can do is what we're going to do. We're going to follow instructions on a post that I wrote a few weeks ago uh, called Installing KDB Plus JupyterQ and EmbedPy Using Conda. We're just going to focus on this part. So <clears throat> first of all, go here, um, conda.io slash miniconda.html. Here you can find links for different distributions. Like I said, we're going to be downloading Miniconda. So I'm going to get the 64-bit bash installer. And to do, just create a new folder temp and then run a curl command to download that. So make their directory temp curl oops. There we go. It should take just a few seconds. Here we have it. And oh, I forgot to cd into my tab. So I'm just going to copy this to my directory that I had created. Um, then temp. All right, so we have it there. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to run this. And I'm going to press enter to continue. Then there's some uh, license agreement, and then let's say yes to it. Then enter again. It's going to take a few seconds to install. As you can see, it's installing Python 3.7, a few more libraries, but it shouldn't install too many of those. And there you go. Do you wish the installer to be prepared? Minicon to be installed location to pat. Sure, why not? Okay, so that's it. Um, to confirm whether we have Conda installed or not, we're gonna do which Conda. Okay, we don't have it right now. So if we do source bash rc and try again, now <clears throat> we do. So our system now recognizes Conda. So you know, if, if you try to run the Conda command, it doesn't work. Run this, and then it will. 
So now what we need to do is create a new virtual environment, a new environment that we're going to use to install KDB. Of course, you can you can also install KDB into your main environment, but I don't like doing that. I I think it's a good habit to have a separate environment and then um, <clears throat> install KDB there. So you need to run this command. Actually, let me just make sure what, what's the command. There we go. Conda create name KDB. We're not going to specify Python because um, we're not worried about that right now. So Conda create, this creates a new environment and you're giving it the name KDB. There you go, sure, that's fine. And that. <clears throat> so now that you have the environment, you can see here that's telling you that to get into the environment to activate it, you need to say source activate KDB. And then once you're done with it, you can say source deactivate. So let's activate it. Source activate KDB. Once you activate an environment, it basically shows up on your command line over here. And you know that you're in this environment. Okay, so going back to our uh instructions now we're going to go to the fun part which is installing kdb so this simple command right here is all you need to install kdb now let's go over what it's trying to do conda install is the command to install using conda dash c here refers to a channel now kx has its own channel where it has a bunch of um basically packages and kdb is one of the package so you can just by specifying channel kx, you're saying go to this channel and get me the KDB package. And then it will take care of any dependencies that the KDB package has and install those as well. It will also set any environment variables that you need to run properly. So let's do that. Okay, so here you can see that you're not only downloading KDB, but you're also downloading all these other packages, and one of them is kdb 3.6 okay so these are basically all the dependencies um, that you need for kdb to run properly here are some new packages that will be installed say yes i was going to go through that list and install everything All right, that didn't take that long. Now, all we need to do is say Q and press enter. Boom, you have KDB on your system. Now to properly install it, you need to first agree to their license agreement. Um, sure, yes. Company name, list Q, write your name, I'm just gonna say list Q. Email Oops List Q dot com Okay And there you go. You now have KDB running. You didn't have to download anything manually, you didn't have to set up any environment variables, everything was streamlined by Q. Now let's do the traditional Hello world statement and boom. Hello world two plus two four. So everything works fine. We're good to go. I hope you liked this tutorial and found it useful and really appreciated what a difference it makes to have conda and be able to use that to install KDB. You know the important part actually happened behind the scenes, which was the package management where we wanted to install KDB but we were also able to install other libraries that KDB now depends on without having to manually download those. You'll see how useful that is later on when we start using some other libraries like Abedpy and JupyterQ. Um, I think that, I, that will be my next video tutorial so stay tuned and I hope you enjoyed the sessions.